This Basics of Risk Management series is brought to you by Risk Garage. What does a risk register do? In the risk management process, a lot of information is gathered from risk identification, risk assessment, and risk response planning. The risk information is sometimes scribbled on whiteboard or paper. The information could be lost if it is not kept in a structured manner. Therefore, the risk register plays a very critical role in capturing and managing the risk information. So, what information does a risk register capture? In the next few minutes, I would share with you the content of risk register. First of all, all the risks need an ID. The ID should be unique, just like the numbers appearing on our identity card. It would be good if the ID can differentiate between threats and opportunities. For example, you could use the alphabet T to represent threats, followed by numbers. Similarly, the alphabet U could be used to represent opportunities. Next, the risk needs a risk title. The risk title should be precise, and everyone can have a rough idea of the risk after reading it. The causes, event, and consequences info is the next critical information to be captured in the risk register. Risk status is required. You can tag it as active or closed. The team can use filter to hide the closed risks and work on the active ones. If you need more category of risk status, you have the freedom to add. For example, if you want to filter out the risk that you will take without any risk response, you can add a accept risk into it. Oh, there must be an owner for each risk. The risk owner is accountable for managing the risk. And, there will be an audit trail section for the risk owner to update the changes of the risks. The narrative is essential, as it will provide the evidence when you plan to close the risk. The next review date for the risk should be captured in the risk register. The purpose is to regularly check on the risk status. The risk trend, i.e. improving or deteriorating, is also discussed. If possible, the start date of risk exposure should be stated as well. And the risk due date is when the risk will happen, or when the task that will be impacted by the risk will be executed. Any response planned after the risk due date is meaningless. Risk responses are definitely required in the risk register. Each risk can have more than one risk response, in order to ensure the risk can be managed effectively. Similar to risks, each response will have a unique ID, which can help identify the responses easily. Of course, each response will have a response owner. The response owners can be different from the risk owner, as most of the times, the implementation of risk response requires certain skill and expertise. It's always prudent to the person with the right skill to plan and implement the response. Risk response audit trail should be made available for the response owners to update the progress. And the due date of risk response should be specified as well. The risk assessment outcome comprises the probability of occurrence, impacts on different goals, and severity of each risk. This essential information must be captured in the risk register. Sometimes, we will capture pre-mitigated, and also the post-mitigated probability and impacts. The post-mitigated, or residual risk attributes, are based on the best estimate from the team, if the risk responses are implemented. Preparing risk register cannot be viewed as a one-off exercise. It should be treated as a live repository and updated regularly. When a new threat or opportunity is identified, it should be recorded in the risk register. Also, when a risk is closed, its status should be updated as well. Evidence must be provided in the audit trail column to support the closure of risk. The structure of the risk information can be easily captured in a spreadsheet. If Microsoft Excel is used, we could write some VBA code to automate certain functions, like plotting of top risks on a matrix, and highlighting overdue risks and responses. However, a shortcoming of spreadsheet is that it's not easy to control the version if the risk register is to be used by more than one person. The web-based risk registers may become handy, as all the users will always see the up-to-date risk information. However, many of the risk apps may need subscription fees to use the functions. If you look harder, you may be able to find a free risk register app. I hope you have gained some good knowledge from this video.
If you have some good tips to share, please leave me a comment. Thank you, and see you again.